While the future of Bungie continues to look shaky, we now have a new report coming from IGN about a leadership shakeup. There's fear of more layoffs, and there's an overwhelming sense internally that leadership will be leaving in droves in 2026 once they get their final payout from the PlayStation acquisition. Now, this report from IGN is actually coming on the heels of an Astacross video that was making waves because of an anonymous email that he read. Now, there is doubt being cast on the validity of that email. It seems, however, I think, to echo things that Hiroki Totoki said about Bungie leadership previously, as well as the latest reports from IGN in this thing that they just published. There has also been changes to the direction of Marathon. The actual game itself has had changes. There was a director change for Marathon. There were canceled projects. There's a looming sense that layoffs are going to happen after the final shape finally lands. And I, for one, am not surprised by any of this. I've said for a very long time that Bungie leadership is toxic and it would lead to repercussions for the company at large. So, we covered the layoffs in the past. I wanted to cover this as well because I thought this is a pretty big moment. I feel like the end is near for Bungie and will likely end up getting absorbed by Sony or some uh, something like that. So I put all the good information right here at the beginning of the video in the, sort of the form of an opening monologue. And I do that so you don't have to go searching. <coughs> Excuse me. So you don't have to go searching. But I also do that because it's a long stream that we end up discussing the topic. So if you want to be here for those live streams, hit subscribe and the bell button so that way you're not missing out on the content. Well, the future of Bungie does not look any brighter since the last time that I covered the layoffs. And once again, it seems that leadership is playing a huge role. Thanks to another report from IGN, we have learned a lot. We have director changes that were kept quiet for nine months. There's been changes to how player avatars are going to work in Marathon. There is a fear that there'll be more layoffs after the final shape is delivered. There were canceled projects internally. And there's an ominous fear that the leadership will be doing something in 2026 that could mean trouble for the company. And all of this actually came out the day that Astacross ran a video about an anonymous email that he had received. So I want to first just walk through everything in the IGN report. That's where all this information is coming from. IGN basically was covering some changes to Marathon, but there was a lot more in it. Now, I'm going to make mention of what the anonymous letter said, because I do think some of it seems to line up with what Hiroki Totoki said about Bungie. But keep in mind, Totoki is acting CEO of Sony Interactive Entertainment, and they made sure to specify when he was critical, he was making sort of critical comments about developers and companies, they came out and said, hey, he was talking about Bungie. They wanted to make it clear that it was not about other PlayStation studios. So clearly, Bungie is having some serious leadership issues. Now then, I am going to give you my thoughts on the matter. I didn't throw out my typical tweet asking Twitter what they thought. I don't really feel like delving into that so I'm just going to kind of give you my opinion on this now I don't have a high opinion of Bungie or its leadership based on all the things that we have learned as well as things that I've experienced firsthand so very little that we're hearing is surprising to me so first what happened now the IGN article by Rebecca Valentine is what we will largely rely on for this she is the same journalist for IGN that reported on the toxic culture at Bungie in the past I didn't think that article was very good but she also covered the layoffs at the end of 2023 and I thought that coverage was quite good now the title of the article is Bungie replaces marathon director amid leadership shakeup fears of layoffs and the article opens up by saying the following amid ongoing anxiety within Bungie following layoffs last year the studio is now preparing for another shakeup this time on marathon its upcoming service game intended as the next step beyond destiny now the the phrasing here is interesting Because she indicated on Twitter that this article was ready to go. She reached out to Bungie, which prompted the new Marathon director to actually send a tweet. So the article makes it sound like the shakeup is happening right now, but the director change actually happens nine months ago. Now, that doesn't mean that they aren't currently working on changes. Maybe there's just sudden things or or things that are starting to take effect now that the director has been in the position long enough to make those changes. And there were changes made to the game. She said the following... 
According to multiple sources familiar with the matter, Bungie is in the midst of shifting around its creative leadership on Marathon, including removing longtime Bungie designer Christopher Barrett from the game director role. IGN learned he is being replaced by former Valorant game directive jo- director Joe Ziegler, who left Riot Games for Bungie in 2022. Now again, the timing here is odd because this was kept quiet for nine months, and the question is why? And according to Valentine, re- Reaching out to Bungie seemingly prompted us learning about this director change, and this is what she said. IGN has reached out to Bungie for comment on whether or not Barrett will remain with the company. Bungie has yet to respond to IGN's request for comment, but shortly after we reached out, Ziegler confirmed his appointment to game director on Twitter. So it sounds like somebody nudged him. is like, hey, you got to make an announcement. We need the public to know that we've made this change because I think they're like, hey, IGN's going to publish this article. Now, even the tweet, I think, is somewhat awkward. He says, hey, everyone, fun update. For the last nine months, I've been working on Marathon as the game director. We're still baking, but I'm excited to share with you more info on the game as we get closer and closer to bringing it all to you. Now, Ordinarily, tweets like this happen when the person gets the promotion or the new position, and then everybody says, congrats. But the responses to his tweet were a bit mixed. People understandably question why the change took place and why it was kept quiet. And IGN indicates that under his new direction, there have been changes made to Marathon, and this is what she says. While this is going on, sources tell IGN that Bungie is pouring resources into getting Marathon out the door. The game's direction has shifted somewhat under Z. Ziegler's new leadership, one source says, including moving away from custom player characters in favor of a selectable cast of heroes. Now, this has not been met. This is this is me talking now. This has not been met with roaring applause. People hear heroes and they're just not really pleased with the change. Now, it was pointed out that IGN sources seemingly did not know if Chris Barrett was still at Bungie, which is what prompted IGN to reach out to Bungie to ask. Now, as it stands right now, now, it seems Chris Barrett is potentially been promoted to executive creative director. That is currently what his Twitter profile says. However, Barrett has said nothing and neither has Bungie, which I think seems strange. Putting someone from Riot who worked on Valorant on Marathon and promoting a longtime employee, well, that seems like something worthy of an announcement. Even celebration, right? Like, hey, this guy's been here a long time. We promoted him, and this game's in good hands. This guy came from Valorant. Keeping that quiet for nine months just simply doesn't make sense. But there's even more from IGN. Apparently, there is a looming fear of more layoffs after the final shape ships. Say that five times fast. Now, this is what they have to say. While upcoming Destiny 2 expansion, the final shape is also being prioritized, there are growing fears and rumors that layoffs will immediately follow its release. One person with knowledge of budgets at Bungie told me that nothing adds up and something will need to happen to curb costs unless the final shape does so well to cover the gap and people can move to Marathon. So those st- those statements are pretty ominous, right? Nothing adds up. Like, there's going to need to be layoffs. This isn't going to sell enough to cover this gap. Now, this probably makes sense of why Bungie is doing so many streams leading up to the final shape. They're trying to garner as much attention and support as possible. They want players to return to the game. There's a free event. There's things that are coming. And I think what they're going to be doing with that is trying to get more people to pre-order the DLC. There's a lot riding on the final shape. And this lines up with the previous reports about the Bungie layoffs, that there was a good chance more would happen if the DLC did not perform well. Basically like, hey, we'll pull this lever again if we have to, was essentially a statement that was made. Now, according to IGN, other projects have also been canceled or put on hold. Quote, when Sony acquired Bungie, the studio brought with it a number of other incubation projects, including a mobile-like game codenamed Gummy Bears and a new IP known as Matter. According to sources, Matter was canceled back in 2020, but the team continued to work on a similar project with slightly different direction until that too was canceled in late 2022. Gummy Bears, meanwhile, is currently in a holding pattern due to the ongoing company struggles. So, the plans of Bungie, they wanted to expand, build more studios, launch new games. There was even talks of them like getting into publishing, like publishing games. All of that seems to have been completely shelved. But this is where the report takes a more ominous tone. Apparently, there is a growing sense that leadership will vacate the company in 2026. This is what they say. 
Within the company, there is a growing expectation that senior company leadership will leave in droves in the summer of 2026 when the final payouts from Sony's acquisition of the company take effect. With this in mind, there is a strong push to get Marathon out the door before then and let whoever takes the reins after that, be it Sony or Bungie, to worry about how it is sustained. So the expectation is apparently so real that they're attempting to get Marathon launched before this exodus takes place. Like, it feels like a very real thing. They're like, well, (laughs) we got to get this out the door before all these people leave. Now, this is where I think it is worth mentioning something that Astacross's infamous email claimed. It was stated in the email that Sony wants to take over and that the perspective is that they view Bungie executives as, quote, gluttonous, okay? I don't want to get into the entirety of the email, whether or not it's real. It honestly reads like somebody wrote an email and then like pushed it through chat, chat GPT to kind of filter and hide who they are. It, it reads like AI sort of rewrote somebody's email. But all of it seems to line up with Hiroki Totoki's comments. Recently, when some of his comments were taken as critical of Sony-owned developers, they made sure to clarify he was speaking about Bungie which is interesting, but Totoki said the following according to PC Gamer, quote, I visited the Bungie Studios and had meetings with the management, and I saw that employees working at the studios were highly motivated, showing great creativity, as well as an impressive knowledge of live services. However, I also felt that there was room for improvement from a business perspective with regard to areas such as the use of business expenses and assuming accountability for development timelines. I hope to continue the dialogue and come up with some good solutions. So you're going to notice something. He met with management, but then he praises the employees. That's that's a clear dividing line in my mind. He's like, he's not praising, praising management or leadership. And then he makes the mention of use of business expenses and accountability with development timelines. You could describe somebody as not handling business expenses as gluttonous, okay? I also feel like there could be some culture differences here. You know, Japanese business practices versus, you know, West Coast American business practices might be very different. I see all of these dots being very connected. Remember the previous layoffs? According to IGN, quote, sources at the time told IGN that when leaders were asked if they had considered taking pay cuts prior to making layoff decisions, one responded that Bungie was not that type of company, okay? I can definitely see that culture clash taking place here, which would lead to things being said like, hey, they're gluttonous, and they would be critical of the leadership and the accountability. That's such a great word, isn't it? Accountability? It seems like Bungie leadership is being held accountable by their owners and potentially facing a takeover and maybe even leadership exodus, which would probably be a sour note to the employees who have expressed such frustration and problems with the leadership like they won't listen and the the monetization debates internally that we've heard about that that actually came up in the anonymous email in Astacross's video wanting to actually change and not be aggressive with monetization well it would make sense to be aggressive with monetization if you're planning to leave you're just trying to drive revenue you're trying to drive bonuses and then you're just going to sort of abandon ship so What do I think about all of this? Okay, what are my thoughts? First and foremost, I'm not surprised, okay? I've known for a long time that leadership at Bungie is toxic and just full of hubris. And I predicted that it would lead to problems for the company. Even when IGN covered the toxic culture at the company, I pointed out that careful readers would see the retaliation culture was still well in place. People were still fearful to speak out. And that comes from the top. If you feel that you're safe and protected and that you have good leadership, you would have no problem sharing your stories. But if you go read that IGN article, the retaliation culture, the toxic culture was still well in place. I had former employees privately reach out. They said they appreciated my coverage. They said the toxicity went all the way to the top, and that's largely the source of it. They agreed that the IGN article was basically a puff piece to make Bungie look good. Remember, Pete Parsons comes with like statistics in hand about diversity at the company. A lot of hand-waving, a lot of obfuscation. I even had an employee at the company reach out and try to get me to stop talking about it because they didn't want people to know what was going on. At the same time, I said more would come out. I said, listen, running a company like this simply cannot last, and that eventually the truth would come out. 
Well, if enough leadership leaves and if enough employees get laid off, maybe one day we will get the full story. I actually think a Sony takeover could be good. There's a clear history of bad leadership at Bungie, and a reset, I think, is needed. And I honestly think that Marathon sounds like it is in danger. Changing directors, changing core elements of the game, trying to rush the game out before leadership leaves, and being like, well, whoever's in charge, it's in their hands. That's a recipe for disaster, if you ask me. And for all intents and purposes, Destiny 2 seems headed to end of life, or at least some type of autopilot. A format where they're just going to allow the game to coast on the fumes of less bandwidth and less staff supporting and building for the game. After it's all said and done, Sony may want the IP of Destiny. They may want the tech uh, and the data, along with the talented staff. According to Hiroki Totoki, there are highly motivated and creative employees at the company, and we know this is true. Over the years, the, their ability to sort of reinvent aspects of Destiny and keep Destiny going, I think their art department's always absolutely crushed it with armor design and gun design and just the way the game feels. They've got good talent at Bungie. I would just hope that the hard-working employees are able to stay at the company and the bad leadership gets run out on a rail. For them to ride this out and get their final payout in 2026 and then just abandon ship, well, that would be a pretty unsatisfying end for the players of Destiny and for the Bungie employees that had to walk through all of this. But it'd be par for the course, given everything I know about the leadership and everything we've heard about them. It's sort of their character and how they handle business. But that's just my take. What's your take? Let me give you my sort of closing thoughts and conclusions on this so we can transition and discuss this as a live audience. I had some time to reflect on this situation overnight and sort of I wrote this sort of ender right now uh, this morning and it's really given me an appreciation for not having to cover one game, especially not having to cover Destiny. There was a time where that was sort of a traumatic experience, like no longer being able to play or cover Destiny, but now it's almost a relief. The highs and lows of Destiny 2 were always doubled because I was both a player and a content creator that relied on the game. To be free of that and to have distance from the game, the company, the community, and the creators, it's actually a good feeling. I can genuinely say that I actually hope the game and the employees can pull through this. I think they still have a great game and a great IP on their hands. I think they've got really talented employees. I would also, though, want to see the leadership exposed for their mismanagement, their toxicity, and their misconduct. I still maintain that more stories will come out and we'll know a whole lot more very soon or at least somewhere in the future. The second thing I want to say is the PlayStation acquisition was previously cited as one of the reasons that Bungie survived. It could be the reason that Destiny as an IP actually survives as well. The technology, the expertise, the talent, the marketing power of Destiny is, I think in PlayStation's estimation, it's likely worth saving. Right, But it may require a lot more pain before the redemption arc begins. My conclusion is this. I don't think Bungie is currently equipped to right the ship. Morale is almost assuredly at an all-time low, from management toxicity and poor decisions to the threat of more layoffs, while the recent wound of layoffs is still fresh. The recipe for them to turn things around just doesn't appear to be in play, and Source is going to... IGN about, hey, we we had a director change nine months ago, and they kept it quiet, and we're making changes to Marathon, and, you know, this anonymous email that goes to Assacross, I actually think this is probably frustration bubbling up to the surface from the employees. They don't want the marketing and the streams to convince people that everything is okay, because internally, it seems like things are very much not okay at Bungie, which is why, for now, I think it seems that the end is near, but... Those are just my thoughts. Now it's time to hear your thoughts. So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome in, guys. This was something we were debating covering because at first all we really had was an anonymous email from Astacro- that went to Astacross that seemed like maybe it was real, maybe it wasn't, and then there was maybe the, the opportunity to sort of summarize what Hiroki Totoki said. And while we were actively discussing... Uh, whether or not we should cover this and how we would cover it, the IGN article dropped in the wake of seeing a tweet that the director was like, oh, hey, I'm the director now. I've been the director for nine months. I still don't know why you would keep something like that a secret. I think it would be pretty much a cause for celebration to be like, 
we've promoted a longtime employee to executive creative director and we moved a guy who worked on Valorant of all games you know moving him to be in charge of Marathon I would again I feel like that's a cause for celebration so I'm I'm curious as to why that's been kept quiet uh, for so long and likely employees didn't feel the need to run to the press about it because they were dealing with layoffs which was probably a lot more uh, garnering their attention well, here we go. Han shot first, and so did you. DK Baker with the first gifted member. Thank you so, so much. We do have a running goal right now of if we can get to 2,500 members, we're going to do a big community game night at the end of the month. We've been doing that as a way to celebrate and to say thank you to all the people that gift. And a five bomb comes in from Joker Quinn. Joker Quinn's decided to upgrade. He's usually doing single gifteds all day long, and he's going to do a five bomb. And Adam Lee renewed their membership for 11 months. Says, hey, everyone, hope everyone's having a great day, and remember to like the stream. P.S. Don't forget about the coffee. Destiny needs to be saved. Adam Lee, don't forget, if you guys are currently paying for your own membership, if you are paying and it's not been gifted to you, you want to upgrade from the $5 to the $6. It gives us a dividing line between uh, gifted members and paying members because we do different things for uh, both of those tiers. Warsmith says, as a current player of Destiny 2, I'm rather itching for Sony to take over. Upper management has proven that they can't do the job, and they are getting in the way, so it's time to move them. Yeah, I thought that was pretty telling when the layoffs came out, and we had employees basically being like, it's pretty frustrating to see the game do poorly, and then be like, well, hey, you know, we were pushing against some of your ideas and you wouldn't listen to us, and a lot of those ideas are what ticked people off. There was that $15... Uh, starter pack that got a bunch of criticism and then it got so much criticism they took it out of the game and that was something that employees likely said would happen they're like you can't do this sort of monetization practice the community's going you know to they're going to reject it they're going to they're going to say no wired rope gifts five and takes us to 10 members i'm sorry no that should be 11 members that should have been a six um i'm sorry i'm bad at math we had one from dk beggar and the five from joker quinn so we're at 11 my bad on the on the bad counting there Welcome back, Vapor and Frank and all the people that are giving gifted members. Keep the talent for the first-person shooters. I think... I think that's going to be the biggest loss is that the leadership seems largely protected, right? You know, they're all... If if this happens, they're going to ride off into the sunset in 2026 and, you know, making a, a boatload of money... And they're going to leave, you know, a bunch of layoffs and fired people and canceled projects in their wake. You know, I just, it's, it's frustrating as somebody who tried to say for a very long time, I've been saying it for four years, that it, that it's a toxic company. The leadership is, is they're, they're not good people. They do bad, they do bad things. They treat the employees poorly. They treat the community poorly. There's a lot of unprofessionalism and just odd things that have happened over the years um it's like i told people i was like this is the kind of thing that will that will hurt a company like these the chickens come home to roost eventually you know and i i don't think it's just the reality of corporate culture i don't agree with that i don't think we can just say and wave a hand and say well this is just what companies do i don't agree with that this is your frick you bungee show low key I mean, I've done a couple of those already. I, that's not even really the spirit of this anymore. It's just like, yeah, none of this is very surprising. You know, I, I had a lot of time to think about it last night. You know, I was talking about it with my wife. I was like, yeah, we're covering Bungie tomorrow. That's always a bit of a task. You know, it takes me longer to write a monologue about Bungie because it, there's just a, there, there's a, there's a tact and a carefulness that I try to apply um, because everyone is quick to be like, well, you make it about you. And it's like, well, how could you not at least at some measure make it about you after a company directly targeted you for insane financial loss? Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't know how you could avoid that aspect, but I feel like I've had enough time to be like, I've got enough distance from the, the company, which I think the company is, just, is run by bad folks, and get away from the community and get away from all of the nonsense to just be like, I still think it's a good game. I think it's a game worth saving. I think it's an IP worth saving, maybe more at this point. You know, I think it's an IP worth saving. I think they've got a reservoir of talent. That if you think about the history of gaming, you know, they stand tall, you know, in, in the history of games. Like, they've got good stuff. Um, 
Uh, if you know, you know. Yeah, Brooklyn. They curated the toxic elitist culture, and now they're suffering from that type of community. The new free DLC got ripped in the live stream from what I read from D2 creators. I didn't pay any attention to it. I was playing Hi-Fi Rush, and I was like, man, where did everybody go? We were having some good gameplay. I didn't realize that they were streaming. I just, I don't pay any attention to their game anymore, you know, understandably. Solid Snake with seven months of membership. Been playing Destiny since the D1 beta, and Bungie needs a Sony takeover bad to get the current management out of there. I firmly agree with you, uh, Solid Snake. I also uh, I, I started playing with the beta. Obviously, I don't play anymore, not since early 2021. Sony is going to need to step in, says Ala Park, before 2026 if they want to save any of the talent at Bungie. Bungie management is going to keep cutting until it's a skeleton. Uh, welcome back, Warsmith, man. Thanks so much for keeping your membership here. There's an, uh, there's a red badge for you. Um, ripped is an understatement. It was not getting ripped. Yeah, I didn't pay any attention. I saw people saying that it looked good. I saw people saying that it looked bad. That's pretty much par for the course for any time any Destiny anything gets announced. Anytime they announce anything, there are people that are like, this looks amazing. And then there are people that are like, this looks like butt. Like, that's, I, I covered that game for half of a decade. It didn't matter what they talked about, you know? Now, I will say there were some moments that were like sort of universally celebrated because the content was just so big, like, you know, the Taken King or Forsaken. Those were probably moments where there was less people saying, um, you know, oh, it looks bad. But generally speaking, every season, every DLC, you know, had a lot of the naysayers. So it's always hard to know if that like represents the community at large or just the the typical Destiny. You know, I play the game every day and I hate it. Players, you know those players. We all know those players. The people who quite literally play Destiny every day of the week and yet they seemingly hate it, like an ex girlfriend or something. I hope Sony unban folks like Lono on Destiny 2 and start fresh. Bungie has been so strong for too long, and now their skeletons are flying out of the closet. Yeah, I mean, I doubt that's ever going to happen. You know, I, I doubt Sony gives a single hoot about people that have been banned wrongfully. That's just not an interest for them. I think they're interested in recouping talent and the IP, the tech, and the data. They've got amazing you know, data. They've got amazing insight into how live service games behave, the highs, the lows, and everything in between, you know? <clears throat> it's so sad you were carrying the Destiny 2 directory for a while when no one big wanted to touch it and promoting their game, and then the crap happened. I mean, there's nothing you can do about it, man, you know? It's just one of those things where, uh, you know... People made decisions, you know, Bungie made decisions that they thought were, uh, you know, I think they thought things were going to get better and it made things a whole lot worse, you know. When do we get the children out of management and get adults and professionalism in there like Sony? Only then may Lono get a chance to come back. I don't know if I'm interested in coming back, you know, I... Over the years, I've had people say, like, this guy's trying to get back into this community. I, you, you couldn't pay me money to get to go back and interact with that community. You know what I'm saying? I would, I'd rather crawl across, crawl across broken glass, you know, than have anything to do with those folks. So I don't, I don't know if I have an interest in going back, you know. If there's a Destiny 3 or some crazy evolution of the game way out in the distant future, you know, 2026, 2027. I don't know. Maybe. I've just... <laughs> I i don't know. It's like once you see that you, you know, that, that the game is good, but it's not everything, you know? It's like there's a lot of other games to play. There's a lot of other things to cover, you know? I... I just don't know if I'd ever want to hitch my wagon to that IP, that company, or, you know, be in proximity with any of those people ever again. It's just, it's just not a place I want to go. (laughs) Green Monster with six months says, Morning Lono. Any hope if leadership changes to Sony, they might look back to anyone who's been wrongfully banned and give them back their accounts. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of talking about that. I just don't think that that is a concern of Sony. Like, I don't think Sony has a bullet point somewhere about, like, we need to get back in there and and fix bad and wrong bands. Like, I just don't think Sony gives a rip about that. And I'll be honest with you, I don't really care either. 
you know it's okay lona's a hell diver streamer now yes yeah, right thanks rich rod for the two dollar super chat tip you know i it's one of those things where it's like if they did it it'd be pretty vindicating same with twitch you know i've i've pressed on them to to do a proper investigation i'm open to that i'm open to discovery i'm open to all of that like you know because i would survive that um bungie would not and neither would those people so it's like but i just don't think that's ever going to happen man like you can't hold out hope for stuff like that it's just been it's been so long that sony's just not bothered like you know how many people are out here claiming they've been wrongfully banned do you think sony wants to hack through those weeds i don't think so there's constantly people on the forums and on twitter that are like oh i was wrongfully banned and it's like I don't think Sony gives a lick about that you know you want to assign a team to figuring out who's been rightfully or wrongfully banned I just especially with how many people were actively cheating in that game how many of those people are like I didn't do anything and it's like okay sure you know recently they banned a guy and it was like he was running something for another game or whatever and it's like they don't have the luxury to kind of like make exceptions when stuff like that happens you know j dog with 23 months in the vip next month what's the color for the two-year badge uh two-year badge is what it's red right now isn't it and then three years is like the the official channel logo like the green i doubt lono is sitting here like hey sony i need my d2 fix help me out I think the only thing I would be interested, and this would be purely as a content creator, I would be interested in covering that game from the perspective of a brand new player. Like, what does it look like to jump into the game, you know, day one when the final shape hits or whatever? That to me would be fun as an analysis of live service games doing new player onboarding so for me that's more of like a subject interest like i'm not interested in the game i think a lot of what they've done with the game looks incredibly cheesy and corny like i've seen some of the advertisements and skins and is the ghostbusters thing real or is that a meme like i'm just looking at stuff thinking that's not the game (laughs) It just doesn't look like the game that I fell in love with and built a career with. Like, it just doesn't anymore. And I'm so I'm not like, oh, man, I'm done to get back in there and shoot some dregs. I would just be interested from a live service perspective because we've talked about this before. We always talked about that with uh, New World. We talked about, like, you know, how do you get returning player and new player onboarding so people know how much has changed, how much has improved, how, what's this mean, what's that mean, how do I progress, and what should I be working on, Right. That, as a subject, I would be interested because Destiny is like a long-standing live service game. I think their track record is actually pretty impressive, you know, given the other live service games laying dead on the field. Yo, my man Yixels, daily, not so daily five spot. That's right, I remember your five daily five spots, Yixels. A lot of interesting news about Bungie recently. As someone who sells plays D2, I'm interested to see what happens. And Patrick Q comes in and gives a member and takes us to 12 on the day, halfway to the 25. Every 25, I give five, so you guys can help us hit that big goal of 2,500 members by doing that one. Um, You get a goat skin, a sparrow, and a ship from the Ghostbusters theme. Yeah, I just feel like that's... I'd, I've never been a fan. Like, I don't feel like I'm taking a cheap shot. Like, you can't play the game take a cheap shot. I don't know about booting up a game where we've gone into other dimensions to kill gods and I'm, like, sitting in orbit with the Ghostbusters car. Like, I don't know about that. That Clash of Worlds seems really cheesy and sort of cheapening. I... I thought the same thing when they... Didn't they put, like, Assassin's Creed skins in the game or something? I was like... like We went into the, like, Ascendant Realm or whatever it was called, and we killed Oryx. He killed him... He took, he took himself, which was an unbelievable scene. The music and the cinematics of the Taken King, I think, are still completely unbeat. He takes himself... We go into that realm, we kill him, and we wear pieces of his body as armor and now you're sitting in orbit with the ghostbusters car it's like huh like what happened fortniteified i think that's well stated nick d 
I think that's well stated. Fortniteified. It just, yeah, I. It feels like something they would have never done in the past. There was respect for the art and the feel of the game, and to be like, I don't know, that that doesn't feel like the art's being respected. It feels like you're trying to make money, which is fine. They're a business. You can't criticize business angles and business motiva- motivation, but it's a clear line of like, yeah, the art doesn't really matter anymore, right? <laughs> like you're you're okay with this. Yo, Dan's a tastic with a ten bomb takes us to twenty two members on the day. That's a big one, Dan. Thank you very much. Like our ghosts are part of the lore, and you're carrying around a Slimer ghost. You see, like when when. Cade Six's ghost get shot. That's like a moment. And and now you can you can have a a Slimer ghost. Like I don't know. I feel like what it does is it current days the game. It's you know what I mean. It's like oh yeah, we're we're guardians of light, and I'm got a Ghostbuster. I got a Slimer ghost. Like you know what I'm saying. I don't know. Yo, a five bomb comes in from Tyler Johnson, and I now owe you guys five members. That's also Agent of Chaos right there, taking us to the next rollover. So I'll owe you five more if we get to 50. You guys are crushing it already today. Thank you so much for the generosity. I've been doing the five bombs right away when I owe them to you instead of waiting them for the end. Yeah, Greg Miller tweeted about it this morning, and I thought he was joking. He says, to whoever at Sony made this deal to get Ghostbusters into Destiny, don't stop. Don't even play this game anymore, but I bought this stuff. I will do this for all games you cross over with. Have you heard of Helldivers 2? Yeah, I just don't think there's a reason to have those, those, you know, those lines start to cross. They cheapen the ghost with the ghost ghost and the cat ghost back in D1. I saw those pics this morning. Here's why I don't agree with you, Eugene. Essentially saying that there are holidays or, you know, celebrations that the Guardians would take part in. We can sort of allow for that, right? Like, oh, yeah, you know, the people in the tower are celebrating this this thing, this festival, this whatever. And the Guardians would take part, right? It would be like watching the Avengers and then the Avengers take part in Halloween, right? You'd be like, oh, you know, th- this this makes sense, right? Like they would do this. That's I think that's different, Eugene. I don't I don't think that's the same as <laughs> I don't think that's the same as putting the Ghostbusters car in the game or like a Slimer ghost. Like, I don't know, man. I think that's different. Were they even trying to appeal to old school Ghostbusters fans or boomers or Gen X? A, a lot of people that play Destiny are boomers and Gen X, man. A large, a large portion of that player base is, uh, you know, thirty year, thirty year old and up. You know, they're not putting. The, that's why they put like The Witcher Three in there, and they put like Assassin's Creed in there. Those are franchises that are going to be more popular with, uh, you know, the older, older brackets of gamers. What about the chocolate ghost shell? Again, you have to understand something. Chocolate and holidays, you can leave room for that to exist in the world of Destiny. Ghostbusters doesn't exist in that game. Assassin's Creed doesn't exist. Witcher 3 does not exist in Destiny. You could imagine Destiny having holidays and cookies and chocolate, right? It's almost like another universe where you're like, yeah, you know, they would have their own things that they do, their own customs and traditions and celebrations. That's not the same as as putting Ghostbusters in the game. You know, Madara with the five spot. Thank you so much for the $5 super chat tip. Destiny is the retirement home for FPS players. (laughs) I, 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 I... I like that. That it's really a di- come on. It's okay to say this. It's kind of a dad game, you know. It's kind of a dad game, and I think that that's all right. I think it's okay to have games for dads. Dads are gamers too, you know.
the holidays were based on human holidays right but we weren't celebrating christmas it wasn't it wasn't current day st- it, it, it wasn't our reality shoved in we didn't celebrate christmas we didn't celebrate halloween right again it creates almost a sense of multiverse like oh we're in another universe we're in an alternate universe where their version of christmas is called this and their version of halloween is called this like that works that's not if you're tr- you're trying to equate that to ghostbusters and i think you're just looking silly you're just looking silly like to act like festival of the lost being inspired by halloween is the same as the ghostbusters car like eh, <laughs> come on it's, it's not the same they are not equal my friend <laughs> they're not uh I agree with your retirement home sentiment. I suck at FPS, and uh, my last one was Destiny 2. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's fine. You you need you need something to do when your reflexes get a little bit slower, you know, <laughs> and you can't hang with the young bloods, you know. You, you need that, and and Destiny Destiny's here for you for that, you know. There's a lot of talk about you, you know them heading to you know, EOL, um, end of life. You know, there's a lot of talk about that. And I would say, I believe that now more than ever with the IGN report about how, you know, there's concerns that there'll be layoffs in the wake of the final shape shipping. And that then there's a thought, there's a really growing sense that the leadership is just going to bail in 2026 so they're like, we got to get Marathon out the door before that happens. Yeah, I agree with you, TJ Rage. I think Marathon's in a lot of trouble. I do. You don't you don't keep a director change quiet for nine months and make fundamental changes to the game, and then and then internally you're like, yeah, we got to get this out the door before the leadership leaves. Holy crap, that sounds bad. That that doesn't sound like anything good. Yo, Ghostface with a five dollar super chat tip. I just wish. After the time you put into the game, you could at least see the finality of the story. Other than that, you're not missing anything. And a 10 bomb comes in from Resolve, and he takes us to 37 members on the day. Unbelievable. Thank you so much. I also think Marathon's going to be a disaster. I think Marathon has all, all signs point to that game. Yeah. It not being in a good spot. A five spot from Dan's Tastics. So you're saying we need to add the tag Boomer Shooter on Steam for D2. I don't know about that. Yo, Kriggle or Kriggy coming in with two months of membership. Welcome back, dude. Thank you so much. Keep in mind, guys, if you're not actually on a gifted membership, if you're paying for your own membership, you really want to bump up to the $6 member tier. You're missing out on content if you're still at the $5 tier. The $5 tier is now purely reserved for gifting. We can all watch the final of the story on YouTube for free. I mean, it's it's like not watching a show for a really long time and then people are, you know, talking about the finale or whatever. I just don't care, you know? It's like, I, I haven't touched the game in three years, dude. Like, you know, Foggy, welcome back. Thanks for renewing your membership. There was, I mean, there was certainly a time where I would say for about a year, I felt like a massive amount of depression because you, I have all these memories with the game. I have raid jackets. I have t-shirts. I have a Cade 6 statue somewhere. You know, it was a massive part of my life for five years. Like it was a community. It was a home. It was a like I would see people in public with destiny shirts on and be like, Hey man, you know what I'm saying? So there was probably about a year where I'd be going through my closet and just get cast down into like melancholy. You know, I would see like a wrath of the machine t-shirt or something. And about a year into like no longer being able to play the game, I kind of started getting over it, but it's been three years, man. Like I just don't, it just feels like a distant memory. Now it feels like, like whenever you're in high school and you can't believe it's all coming to an end, 
you know and it just seems so huge now you don't really care you're not really like oh man I really wonder what so and so is doing I mean you might check up on them on Facebook but largely you just don't you're just not invested in it anymore you're not invested in that world at the time it feels enormous you have way better energy now than you ever did I mean I appreciate that vapor Bumble Pants with 18 months says, Lightfall was such slop. I've gone from pre-ordering every expansion to questioning if I will ever bother with the final shape. Apathy. Foggy. Not just paying for his own membership, but gifted a membership. Thank you so much. Taking us to 38 members on the day. Just going to clarify, all that crap is stupid, but the consumers accepted it. Can't complain now. I mean, there's a big difference between saying consumers expected a ghost with cat ears and saying well you accepted that so it, that that justifies Ghostbusters being in the game I don't agree with that at all no yo roadkill says hit that like button hit it guys hit that like button let's get the 300 likes big turnout here for uh, for today and I know why I know why most of you are here <laughs> <laughs> you know I've been streaming on this channel since um late 2021 and uh you know I don't see a lot of you unless we're talking about Bungie you know so I see you every three or four months so it's good to see you <laughs> I, I know I know you won't be here tomorrow and that's okay but we are doing a lot of Helldivers 2 coverage and I'll be honest with you, Helldivers 2 is kind of doing it, man. It's kind of doing it for me. I've got a channel dedicated to it. We're posting Helldivers 2 updates on the big channel. The one that uh, that got a little hurt. <laughs> you know, just a little hurt. <laughs> Where we had to delete five years of content. 13 million views worth of content. That channel is now a, uh, a Helldivers 2 updates channel. So if you're kind of vibing with Helldivers 2, we'll probably be covering that one tomorrow. We'll probably be playing a little bit this afternoon. And, uh, yeah. So, you know, maybe come around a little more often. We have a good time here. Maybe, you know, get yourself a membership, get in the Discord, get back into your old stomping grounds. There's a lot of people here playing Helldivers together. (laughs) How do people not understand the difference between crossover IPs and wacky ghosts? Yeah, I don't... I'm not connecting those dots. Like, buying a ghost that's wearing, like, a a blanket to look like a ghost for Festival of the Lost is not the same as Slimer being in the game. Yo, what's good, SpongeRoth? How are you? Have you gotten off baby mode yet in Helldivers? I I won't stand for the slander that I am... I'm playing the game in baby mode, okay? I'm playing the game in fun mode. It's fun for me. To play the game with my wife and not going to like the high level content and have a hard time. So, <laughs> uh, Lono well, calling you all out like uh, Easter lilies. Oh, Easter lilies. I think that's a reference to people that only go to church on Easter. Lono, you were the people's voice within the community. You expose a lot of, uh, and certain individuals did not like it. Oh, you expose a lot of issues. When you got turned on, it was the beginning of the end for them. Much love. I appreciate it. I do. I appreciate it. I appreciate the fact that more and more people, you know, kind of get in the ring on Twitter and stand up for truth. You know, I appreciate that. I uh, I would appreciate if you guys would leave people alone, though. Somebody yesterday couldn't resist themselves. I don't know why you're doing that. I, just leave people alone, man. You're not helping anybody. Uh, yo, what's good, Ginger? Amen to that on Helldivers 2. Been following you for years since discovering you from Destiny 2 Year 1. Looking forward to seeing your future coverage on Helldivers. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Lono is cool. It's nice to hear. He has agreed to teach us about the birds and the bees. I That's not what my content's about. I'm not teaching you about that, man. You got Google at your fingertips, which as long as you're over the age of 18, you know, you feel free to search that up. If not, you know, ask your, ask your parents. <laughs> I still get comments mad at me for defending you. I mean, I don't know what people want, you know. I don't know what people want. 
to this day, I've said just somebody actually properly investigate it. Please actually accurately report on it, please. And nobody will. So I don't know why people have such strong conclusions and convictions about something that was never, never handled properly. What's your prediction on the next six months for Bungie? So much talent, but poor major leadership. Yeah, that's a good question, uh, Street Shadow. Um, Yeah, it's not looking good. I'll be honest. It's not looking good. I don't think they have the recipe to turn things around. um, Because I I want you to imagine... The light's flickering. Um... I want you to imagine working under those conditions. You know, the Helldivers channel, the name of the Helldivers channel is literally Helldivers 2 Updates. If you search for that with no spaces, you should find the channel. Um, I'm 41 and my jokes are just awful. If the relationship's going to work, you might want to get used to them. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Um, anyways, if, if you were trying to come up with the conditions to fix the game... I don't think they're under those conditions. So they just went through the pain of layoffs. So friends and colleagues gone. Teams and 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 groups gone. Uh, employee morale things gone. Like we make fun of and kind of laugh at knitting classes getting gutted. That's like a ha ha, right? Uh, knitting classes. But you have to understand what that does to employee morale. So that puts employee morale down. And a great way to push employee morale down even further is to basically be like, if this doesn't sell well, more of you are in trouble. Okay? I, I want you to imagine working under those conditions. like, And I want you to think about what employee morale does to c- quality of work. Right? You gotta think that a lot of these people are updating their resumes, you know, maybe privately talking to other studios, trying to find another job. There's the looming threat that leadership's gonna bail in 2026. As And so they're like, well, we gotta get Marathon out the door before that. I, this is all a recipe, again, just in, in my estimation, this is a recipe for disaster. Just absolute disaster. Final shape won't do it. Layoffs will hit. That'll inevitably hurt Marathon. Marathon sounds like it's in trouble. This is all pointing to, like I said, like the thumbnail says, like the end is near. This is it. This is it. Like they're 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 done. Like leadership's gone a couple years. That doesn't that won't that wouldn't surprise me at all. Those. N- not not nice folks. They're out. They're like, we're out of here. We're going to get in the frick out of here. You know, Sony take over. Now, here's the thing. The beginning of the end could be the beginning of a beginning. Does that make sense? Like, that could be the true beginning, but unfortunately, there's going to be massive amounts of collateral damage along the way. Lots of loss of talent, lots of loss of employees, you know? So I think a Sony takeover could put things back in order, but if that, you know, if that happens 2 years from now, who knows how many people are going to be gone? The size of the company, I mean, who knows? It's still a very big company. They're still over a thousand employees. They're a big company, man. Fuzzy Muffin says, I think the funniest part about dropping Destiny and looking back on it is the evolution of it. Bungie slowly removing mechanics and sections of content for them to turn around and add it back to the game and have it be something that they can monetize. I'm not sure what you're speaking on, Fuzzy. Vapor with 11 months of memberships. Everything happens and has a purpose, and you really came out uh, you really came out a moment most people wouldn't have been professional about, which was inspirational to witness. I appreciate that, Vapor. Don't tell all the sweaty streamers and content creators that D2 is a dad game. <laughs> it's a dad game, bro. <laughs> it's, a, it's a dad game, man. Uh, they're all getting their karma. It'll always come for you. I don't know if they're getting their karma, though, Cable Flow. I mean, I'm seeing, you know... A potential promotion. I'm seeing these people kind of ride off into the sunset 
you know, with a whole lot more money. But we all know, you know, money, money can't fix your soul. You know, money can't bring you actual happiness. It can't. You know, the mirth and the joy that certain people feel, you know, it doesn't come from money. Now, money can certainly help you avoid, like, get above certain thresholds of, you know, destitution so that then, yes, you can achieve happiness, right? But you get to those upper shelves of wealth it doesn't equal it doesn't fix you it, it you know so i don't know playstation walked in the room and saw a knitting circle and was like what the f is that says insomniac black i can't imagine how Totoki's head exploded the second he heard they were having knitting classes with money my man resolving here dropping it today due to 20 dollars super chat tip says sony needs to take over and give a more flushed out universe with animes and maybe movies also rebooting the franchises having a cohesive story that has the best characters that only get love cards bring Lono back hashtag bring Lono back homie they ain't ever gonna do anything like that the combination of companies releasing games that don't feel complete and not IP banning cheaters has ruined most PvP games for me I get bugs and hiccups with the new game, but man, it's frustrating. Oh yeah, I can't imagine trying to be a PvP gamer these days, dude. The cheating epidemic is just unbelievable. I don't think we're qualified to judge souls, just saying. I mean, I think when people act in certain ways and are toxic and horrible and dishonest I think that comes from inside so I think that's an easy judgment to make sounds like Sony is like Troy uh, in community I'm not familiar I didn't watch that show when he oh when he walks into the burning room now I know that I know that (laughs) Sony walks in the room like what in the world's going on here (laughs) uh Who use it as a pejorative, Eugene? Alpha Omega says, Bungie is kind of gay. I mean, maybe he means it that they are, though, Eugene. I mean, I don't know. Is it a bad thing? Would be the question. Does he mean it is a bad thing? I'm wondering if he means it is a bad thing. Uh, Dark Taco with 18 months in a VIP. Miss the show open gonna double back to watch super busy day at work thank you for covering this brother i appreciate that dark taco thank you my point was i don't think these people at the top that are the cause of a lot of the problems i don't think they're getting like karma they're gonna make a ton of money and walk away you know (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> they're going to make a ton of money and they're going to walk away. I was just saying, that doesn't necessarily mean that karma's not knocking on the door. You know? I I I believe that you don't really have to generally do anything. You know? People get what's coming to them. And you, you don't have to do much to see it happen. You really don't. And I think the last four years have made that abundantly clear. They're already very rich. That's probably true, Fat J. They're going to be richer, more rich. I wonder if there's a direct through line to those that came out, replacing and moving devs and Destiny 2 story somewhat falling apart. I'm not sure what you're referring to, Nexuous. Are you talking about when they had to remove people and they had like misconduct at the company and they had to like pay people to be quiet? Is that what you're talking about? Bungie should close down. I don't think they should close down. No. I think they're valuable in the gaming industry. I think they bring something to the table that's important. I'm talking about their their insight into the technology uh, as a shooter. As a shooter. I think as a cinematic action game. Like I think they bring a lot to the table. Just their weapon design team. Um you know, don't care, go woke, go broke. I mean, that's just such an oversimplification of what has been happening. Like, I don't... 
that that statement has been thrown around so much lately like if a company supports something that you don't like you're like well they're going woke I hope they go broke it's like gee many Christmas by the way Lono has every right to feel the way that he does those people tried to destroy his ability to feed his family something uh, that he cultivated for years and worked his butt off for well, I mean yeah you know they're I don't even necessarily I don't even at this point I don't even feel all that strongly about it resolved like there's definitely some remnants there of of anger you know and frustration you know um congrats on 36,000 thank you you know it's been hard work just to you know the last the last three years has been has been hard work just to rebuild so there's obviously things there that I still feel pretty strongly about you know Generally speaking, I feel like they there are, there's a couple of people that could that could do the right thing right now and it wouldn't hurt them at all, but I don't think that's ever going to happen. We baby killed Bungie? What? What are you talking about? Did they even work with Bungie? What are you saying? I prefer to say Fail to provide good and interesting value in your game, go broke. Right, like, <laughs> I just think that the, their problems, in, in, in general, the, the, the problems that they're facing are not like, oh, they went woke, I, you know what I'm saying? Now, if you want to be critical of things they've said on social media or their blog posts or, you know, there's no muzzle big enough, uh-huh, you know, sure, but that's not why the game is where it is. That's like an oversimplification of what has happened with the game. I mean, to, to be quite honest with you, the live service games are always going to go through this. That is the true danger of a live service game. The end. What do you do with all these people? What do you do with them? What do you do when the downturn happens, right? Like you scale to the game's growth so to maintain momentum and to add content and to grow the game, right? And then as a game comes down from that high, what do you do with all these people? Yo, Cardock Ren, 38 months and it's a VIP. Thank you so much. When a game is good, people, uh, when a game is good, people will excuse it because the game is fun. When the game isn't fun, any issue is highlighted. I get really tired of the virtue signaling. A five spot from Green Monster says, Destiny's poor writing in recent years is due to everyone being more worried about the pronouns. I mean, I just don't think so. Happy 30th, Lona. Thank you so much. 30 months from my man, Ginger Prime. Congrats, Lona, just trolling. Okay, yeah, I mean, if you're just trolling and you're just, you know, dealing in, like, you know, silly weirdness or, like, weird statements, that's fine. Yeah, guys, do me a favor. A lot of people here, over 800 people here, man. Make sure and smash that like button. Anytime I talk Bungie, a bunch of y'all pile in because you're like, what's he going to say? And uh, I've, I've been, I think I've been very good today. I'm behaving myself. It was hilarious seeing the muzzle comment from a person that got walked to the door a few months later. I mean, it wasn't surprising to me that other other CMs also were quick to go. I just don't think Sony had an appreciation for how they handled that stuff. They unified it all under one account. That's that's a culture shift, right? That's a culture shift. That's that's a company saying, "Hey, wait a minute. We don't we don't want you guys out here representing the brand doing this." You know what I'm saying? You have a strong case to go after them? I mean, you gonna finance it, brother? Because I can't. As someone who still heavily invests time in the game, says Peter Iliak, of course I need to hear your bungee takes. <laughs> yeah, has he finally cracked, Zubair? Yeah, they're like, is he gonna do it? Is he gonna lose it on stream? There was a time there when we pivoted to variety. I think that was largely why people watched. Like, this guy's going to freaking... He's going to pop on stream. He's going to have an aneurysm right in front of the world. <laughs> <laughs> 
how would they win back the community love at this point without getting rid of management? Um, yeah, I mean, that's a really good question. I think in general, there, I, I don't know how you combat organic decline. I don't know how you combat that. I, I think there's been just organic decline. There are so many factors at play. Do you know how many people that have come into my Discord or my YouTube chat just to let me know they're like, I just stopped playing and I have no desire to go back. I feel like some people just literally hit franchise fatigue. Right? Lono has been specking into resilience and fortitude. They can't F with him. <laughs> <laughs> that's good right like I think people just hit fatigue I don't even think it's like th- I, I genuinely think there are large portions of the audience that are not like I hate Bungie and I hate what they've done and they ruined the game I don't think there's a lot of people that are that passionate about it I literally think people just hit franchise fatigue burnout they're just done they're just done you know they're like I'm good I've I've gotten I have played for you know, six, seven years, you know, however long they've played. I mean, even if you just picked up the game in Destiny 2, you've been playing the game for six years. Like, do you know what I'm saying? I, I just think there's a lot of people that that, that just, that, that happens. It's just, orga- that's organic. Just apathy. There, It's really, really hard to how do you solve apathy? What do you do to that? Oh yeah, come back. You, you're tired of playing the game? Well, come back. Why? We have more game for you. Well, I don't care. <laughs> right? How do you win somebody back who's just like, yeah, I've, it's been a good run. I've played a bunch. I'm good. You know? Have you seen the new DBZ Sparking Zero gameplay? The game looks so awesome and has new gameplay elements that I haven't seen. I'm not sure what you're talking about. A, a, a Dragon Ball Z game? Oh, I can listen for 15 minutes? Okay, that's about all the time I need. Um, so, no, I'm just, I'm not going to do a recap. A 15 minute recap. Like, that's the thing. Like, I don't know how you... How do you bring people back to a game who have just decided, like, I- I've I've had my fill? It's like when you're stuffed at a restaurant, and you're like, that was just phenomenal, dude. I couldn't eat another bite. And they're like, would you like dessert? Now, some of you gluttons are like, yeah, bring it on. But the rest of us are like, bro, no, I'm good. Like, they couldn't, even trying to coax you with, like, pictures you know, or like a dessert tray. You're just like, no, dude, I'm just stuffed to the gills. Like, you can't get people to come back to a game with new gameplay or new game or new stuff when they're just like, yeah, dude, I've, I play the game for six, seven, eight years. I've, uh, I don't need any more. Heard it was less than that. TBH, you've heard nothing. I'll say remembering uh, getting off Destiny 2 felt like getting off of an addiction says Brutal Gear. That's how I remember stopping. You're right. It's not that I hate it. I just don't care. Yeah, indifference is one of the most difficult emotions to combat. Like, what do you do when people are just indifferent? They're just shrugging at you. Like, yeah, no. I'm playing Helldivers, you know? I mean, you don't know what they're doing. You don't know what they're playing, but... I think it's really difficult. You calling me gluttonous? I am. I am. I'm calling you gluttonous. <laughs> Destiny's uh, last generation's Halo. Everything has its day. It's over now. Thank you, Jaggy, for 31 months. Since quarter of the time, the game became a core. Oh, uh, you meant to say chore. Became a chore, a job, too bloated to become a chore, a job. Maybe you meant to say core. I don't know. Sandland isn't a DBZ game, but it's the last game that Toriyama DBZ artist worked on. Oh, okay, okay, okay. 
I've decided I want to play Final Shape because I played the game this far and I might as well complete the chapter, but yeah, I really like don't care anymore. Right, like, Rachel, how many people are going to log in, play through that story to be like, okay, what's going to happen? And they're quite literally going to never go back ever again. Like, that's all they're going to do. Or they'll just wait for a video on YouTube. Truthfully, I haven't visited this channel since Ginger Prime has been collaborating. That dude is a console warrior that I just will see content elsewhere if he's a part of the Reforge experience. I mean, if that's what determines your support of a channel, I'm not sure anybody here will miss you if you leave. I don't think anybody's going to be like, hey, is that is that guy around that was, you know, really demanding about who a channel works with? No? Okay. Like, go somewhere else then, bro. Bazimoto with 28 months. For me, I just love the world and the lore. The gameplay has gotten stale, but at the end of the day, it still feels good to shoot aliens. I come and go. Yeah, that's that animated gif from Tombstone. Well, bye. (laughs) All right. (laughs) I think some of Ginger's takes are just all the way out in left field but he's a fun guy he's a nice guy you know he has me on podcasts i've had him on my podcast it makes for a more interesting world does it not you know (laughs) thanks for the years of great content i mean you're you're welcome (laughs) ginger's just hanging out as a mod you know if he was actively like right now in chat like doing console warrior stuff i could hear you out he's just adding to the conversation about destiny they what in the world yo hitman with a five dollar super chat tip says i've been here since day one lono i have six thousand hours combined and i've done i've been done since last april and it's the best gaming move i ever made the magic is gone Here's what I'll tell you is going to happen, okay? A bunch of you need to push like right now. Go push the like button. Push that thumbs up button, okay? Push the subscribe button so you can talk in chat. A bunch of you are watching and not pushing subscribe because you're like, you know, I hate Lono still for four years. You're holding hate in your heart, which is, you know, just drinking poison. Doesn't do anything, so just hit subscribe. Join the conversation, you know, get over it. And here's what I'm telling you is going to happen. There are going to be a ton of people who come back for this game. And they're going to say, oh, it feels so good to play Destiny again. But all it's going to take is just one instance of frustration or one familiar rough edge. And you're going to be like, yeah, I just don't have the patience for this anymore. You know it's true. One bad drop. One weird loot element, one thing that you just can't stand anymore, and that's it. You're done. You'll be like, I'm good. I feel like the nostalgia will wear off very quickly. Uh, Shining Falcon says, by the way, thank you for all the work you put in these streams and videos. Keep up the great work. Stay healthy and take breaks. Can't do Destiny all the time. I'm doing pretty good on taking breaks from Destiny, my friend. I'm on a three-year hiatus right now. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm on a three year break brother <laughs> remember to take breaks yeah I have been <laughs> they're going to launch a great new darkness subclass and then nerf it and everyone will be out of you again classic destiny 2 content cycle I'll I'll, I'll be straight up with you, okay? If if I could play that game right now, I know it would feel good. I know it would feel good. The hand cannons, the grenade throws, the the supers, I know it. I'm not, you know, shooting a cabal and the steam coming out, you know? I know that it would feel good. But I'm going to be real with you. I'm going to be real with you. I know I would hit a couple of those rough edges, hit a couple of those familiar frustration points, and I'd be like... I'm good, dude. There's so many other games to play. I got a backlog a mile long. 
that's how I would experience it right now if I came back. I know, I know I would. It's just this, there's no... Somebody said the magic is gone, and I just don't, I don't think you can bottle the magic of, like, passion and excitement and love. You can't bottle that. It just sort of happens. And I think they just let the air out of the room. I honestly think they did in 2020 to a pretty large degree. We went from having a hub where like 8,000 people are hanging out watching something crash into the tower, you know? And it's like, how can you get excited about the game after all of that just gets kind of detonated? It's like, I think that was a big morale killer for a lot of people. Yo, a 10 spot from Resolve says, what's the guy talking about? Ginger Prime is cool. He just wants to be, uh, he just wants the best for gamers. And since we do, uh, we not support, since when do we not support someone just because they agree with somebody's opinions? I don't understand it. Yo, African Jedi with a five gifted bomb takes us to 43 members on the day. Just seven away from 50 and I'll gift five more. Every 25, I get five. Thank you so much, African Jedi. You guys get a little member train going. We might hit that 2,500 today. Corridors of time. Yeah, like, you can't manufacture moments like quarters of time or the... What was the stinking thing that cra- that, that crashed into the, the tower? I always forget the name of it. What was that thing? I always want to say it's the Guardian, but I know that's not true. And I know it's not the Leviathan. It's the dadgum... What the heck? You can bottle passion and excitement if there's bottle if there's passion and excitement in your game. What did Peter Iliac say? Real talk, your situation was the biggest morale killer for me. The Almighty, thank you. You you can't bottle that. Those were just moments that had a feel and a vibe, and you felt like you were part of something. You know, they. they they mur- they murdered that. They really did. They damaged that. They had this hub. They had this directory. They had this thing, you know? And they were like, let's just blow a hole in that. We are currently at 24, 25 on the member count. We are 75 away from the current goal of 2,500 members. Guys, thank you so much for that. Great to hear. Thanks for the reassurance. By the way, if you ever want to go to Calibration, reach out to uh, the Dream Team Spicy Clip Series. Loads of funny clips. Reach out. <laughs> if that, I don't think, if that's the Dream Team that I'm thinking of, they, they don't like me, bro. That ain't going to happen. <laughs> No, probably not, dude. I appreciate it, though. Um, Those moments come organic when you're committed to the art. The massive soccer game we had. Yeah, the impromptu shout casting during corridors of time and the soccer game and all of that. Like, you you can't manufacture that. That's just stuff that happens. That's just stuff that happens. And when people that didn't give a rip about the game you know, you that's not going to work. They all come strolling back. They're not going to cover the game. They're not going to foster those environments. They're not going to have those moments because they don't care. They don't care. They were hoping to get back up on the cash cow. Lo, no, he didn't. That's right. Parasito says, I actually interacted with someone last night from back then, one of the Corridor crew, talking about how they don't play Destiny anymore either and miss what Bungie used to do back when they made good decisions. So salty that never came to fruition. Um, What never came to fruition? Uh, Hitman with 30 months. I think Bungie has the golden goose of live service gaming, but to me, they took it for granted and they thought that it could work on autopilot. Well, I think that's their goal. I think that's their goal. I think they're moving the game to autopilot, personally. So they can move on to Marathon. Infinite with 21 months in a VIP. 
The game does have a secret sauce in the way they designed raids and dungeons, but outside of that, I feel like I'm doing homework, chasing non-interesting loot, and dealing with an ancient PvP system. Oh no, you know better. Those moments happen organically when the game is committed to the art of the game and not surrounding BS. Oh, your tagline for split screen? <laughs> well, no, he didn't. Do we still have Carmenica shirts? No. No. We don't have any of that stuff left. Not that all that merch is gone. Everything, everything Destiny related is gone. I, you know. I have to, st- I still have to get rid of so much stuff. I just haven't done it. It's all in closets and stuff. You know, raid jackets and t-shirts and, um, and merch and paraphernalia, you know? There's a big creator in that community that made a video about their thoughts on the future, and I fully agree with them. It includes the autopilot theory. Yeah. Yeah, you can really, you could probably get a lot of life out of that game for a while with a, with a skeleton um, live team. You know? It's part of your history, part of your story. Why get rid of it? For the same reason I would get rid of clothing from an ex or pictures of an ex. Like, why? You know? I'm never going to wear the shirts. I'm never going to wear the jackets. You know? A five spot from Madara. I knew the story was phoned in when the veil got turned into the traveler's heart and the race of the witness shrunk into one being. Hype killed. I don't even know what frick you're talking about. Box it up and store it. It'll be vintage one day. You can tell your grandkids about it. (laughs) (laughs) I don't think I'll ever spend a moment of my life telling my grandkids about destiny. You know, we'll have better things to talk about. I'm sure. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like, I got to tell you in the last, you know, three years of not playing the game, I don't think I've ever been in conversation with people and been like, you know, that destiny game. It'll come up very, very tangentially. Like, people ask what I do. And if they really get into the history, I'd be like, yeah, I, you know, I have I used to cover that game. I used to cover a game full time, but now I do variety. Yo, Tiger 2 Actual. That's an old school name. A five bomb from Tiger 2 Actual puts us on the doorstep of 50. We are 75 members away from 2,500, and that makes it just 70. Mm-mm. Parasita says, knowing about some of the background systems, even old ones, they could autopilot that game for another decade with 100 people or less. Throw old content back in the loop for a few with a few tweaks, add a new piece to the bucket, let the automatic timers handle the rest of it. For sure. Best to you, buddy. Hope you and the family are good. I appreciate that, Tiger 2 Actual. Thank you. Was it the Niobe Lab Shoot the Trees puzzle? I was reading through a Tolkien book. My wife got me this amazing book set, you know, and I'm reading through the heroes of Tolkien right now. And it just sort of gives you the history of the people and like the history of the heroes and Broseliende uh, popped up. (laughs) And I was like, like, oh my gosh, do you guys remember that? (laughs) Oh, man. Do you remember when we solved it? And they were like, we're going to put out a hint tonight. Because I said we were coming back the next day. We figured it out. And I was like, all right, we'll put together a team. We'll come back tomorrow and we'll, we'll solve it. And they're like, we're going to push out a, a clue tonight at this time. And then everybody logged in and tried to solve it. And it was very easy to solve after we got the clue. Yeah. That was pure coincidence, though, I'm sure. Oh no, Bungie leadership's bad. I'm all on that train. But one thing I will call out is how the chat behaved. And the loser who sent the friend request during the stream. 
I'm not. I don't know what you're referring to, Street Shadow. You're saying the chat was be- like behave- misbehaving and being and doing nasty things. Like, I think that happens in every stream, right? If you let the chat <laughs> run wild, I'm not excusing the behavior, but I don't think that's like unique to Destiny streams. Uh, didn't they want Destiny to be sort of a mobile game? Oh, I don't know about that. They were, they got, I don't even know what happened with that game. They got that money. Who'd they get money from to build something? Right? They got money to build something. And it, we, everybody thought it was going to be like a mobile game. The Bungie chat was apparently pretty nasty with their announcement of the new game mode. Oh yeah. I mean, that doesn't surprise me. Yo, good, good seeing you vapor. It was really bad. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. They were friending the developer playing and it had slurs in the names. That has happened to I that happened to streamers. Remember when they were they were sending clan invites and the clan names were really nasty and so you had to go into your settings and turn off um I forget what I had to do, but that was, ha- yeah, that was happening to streamers all the time back in the day. That's not like a new thing. It's gross, but <clears throat> that, that happened when I still streamed the game on purple and that was, you know, four or five years ago. So they got money from Tencent or NetEase. I thought it was NetEase. They got money for Matter. Oh goodness. Matter got canceled. And so did they they kept working on a similar project and that also got canceled. People are just disgusting. Uh, usually it's just somebody who knows that they can get a reaction, right? Special creator event. What game is this? Receive keys. Oh no, I don't even know. Um Yo, the anime Zoe with 29 months says, I haven't been here in a minute. How you doing, sir? I'm doing well, man. I hope you're doing good. I remember everybody yelling try Broseliende. Mm-hmm. Dan Zatasic says, I know I've said it before, but you're a different person from back then. If things didn't play out the way they did, you wouldn't be this better version of yourself. I mean, I appreciate you saying that. I definitely think that... You know, I was having a conversation with a guy recently, and um, he was dealing with some pretty serious stuff, you know, and trying to and trying to change his life, trying to be better. And, you know, I told him at the time, the loss is so enormous you're almost numb to it, you know, when you have a, when you have a channel generating that much money and it just suddenly disappears into thin air, that's so destabilizing. Um, especially when you, you know, you just bought a house, you got a wife and kids and it's like your single income. It's like, Oh my gosh. Right. It's almost overwhelming. So there's a lot of time back then that is just kind of blurry for me. I don't rem- It's very foggy. I'll, my wife will be uh, opening up Facebook and they'll be like memories. And if they're in that time frame of like the second half of 2020 and like all of 2021, I don't even remember. She'll show me pictures and I'm like, I don't remember that. Uh, <laughs> I remember every night watering the garden just to kind of keep keep myself grounded. Like I would spend probably an hour watering the backyard and front yard garden because it was like, I don't know. It was the it was the only thing that could kind of keep my feet on the ground. <clears throat> but I told this guy, I said, looking back, you you don't celebrate something like that happening to you. You're like, yeah, that was great, you know? <laughs> I'm gonna set up generational wealth for my children, and now I can't, right? Like that's not something that you celebrate, but I definitely told him I can see with clear eyes that it was for my good. 
it helped me it improved a lot of things i think about me and my marriage and you know my life so um there's i think there's always that weird mixture of man that was terrible <clears throat> and man it would be really great to have all of the the money and the opportunities that, that were taken that's obviously like oh gosh don't think about that too long but then I also look at myself and it's like well I'm happier and in a better place and my relationships my marriage you know as a dad like I feel like all of those things have greatly improved in direct relation to sort of what happened like I think that would have been been it been a very different it would have been a very different future uh for me um and i think people who commit themselves to falsehood you can see what it does to them i think it hollows people out i think it eats away at them and they 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 don't i don't have to do anything to to you know anybody just on my path doing my thing you know Just a reminder, reminder, Google Indian clubs to help your shoulder. You just bought some Indian clubs? What is that? My shoulder hurt so bad last night. It woke me. It, it didn't wake me up in the middle of the night. Thank goodness. It woke me up this morning. Um, What the frick is this thing? Oh, like stretching, like shoulder stretches, like behind your back and stuff. Okay, okay. I'll take a look at that later. Destiny can't function on autopilot. The game feels best when the community comes together in live events. There's nothing like the game even close to that. Well, here's the thing, Steven. You have to understand that when they say autopilot... Oh, you do like... You do like for range of motion. You do like swings and stuff. Okay. The stretching I've been doing right now is I just push right there and I can feel it. I can feel it. It's helping. It's better than it was. Um, but I obviously need to do more. There's also some stuff I can do with my wife's bands. You like attach it to like like a doorknob and then you like pull behind your back and it just like opens up whatever up here is like pinched. It's yeah, it's been really bad. <clears throat> anyways, anyways. Um Glad to hear you and the family are doing well. Always doing the right thing. On your chosen path is the way to go. Keep on carrying on. I appreciate that. Um, I think you have to understand that like the game functioning on autopilot is... I don't think it's like a destination for flourishing. I think it's a destination for salvaging. Right? It's them trying to get the most out of the game in the in the in the twilight of its existence. Does that make sense? They're they're not trying to bring about the glory days or the golden days of destiny. It's entering into its 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 twilight years. It's it's entering into its final stages. So autopilot, they're just happy to maintain profit margins. So if they shrink down annual operating costs for the game and they're able to maintain a user base of a certain size that's spending a certain amount of money that helps them sort of stable out like i said like what do you do with all of these people like as things decline like what do you do with all these people that's a way to make it not so tectonic it's a way to kind of have things kind of coast down I know the money ain't the same, but your slow and steady growth and are primed and prepared for is a, a viral moment of something taking off. Um, you feel a very unique niche. Well, I appreciate that, Dan Zatasic. People tell me things like that all the time. And, um, yeah, you don't just flip the switch off, right? You slowly dim the lights. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Yeah, people tell me that kind of thing all the time that, you know, 
you just need the right video you just need the right game you know and you're going to kind of take off you've 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 got it you've got that secret thing and it's like i don't know i don't see it i just sit down and 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 make a show and strive for excellence and value you know and if if talent and ability and the skills that i've amassed over 9 years help me with that you know that's that's great you know but i just hold this all so loosely in my hands now it's like yeah great you know if not also great you know i i don't know what this is it could be great it could be nothing it could be just a steady bridge to help me do something that i i, I something else i want to do i don't know so you know, it, we may never see the heights of <laughs> We may never see the heights of what we once saw, and that's okay. Call Ludwig a dummy. Let's stir the pot. Well, I mean, that's not how you grow a community. You can't grow a community with... I've always said that people that try to build communities around drama are trying to heat their home with firecrackers. It's all noise. It's no heat. It's so here and gone. It's pow, 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 pow. It gets everybody's attention for a moment, but it provides no heat. It doesn't actually foster or grow anything. Nothing sustaining, you know? It'd like it'd be trying to light your backyard barbecue with bottle rockets. Like shh, poof, shh, poof. there's just nothing enduring about it. So I know you're kidding, but there's definitely that temptation to lean into, you know, drama and you know, clickbaity things. Um, I was hesitant to even do the thumbnail that we did today. Uh, you know, I was I was kind of like, I don't know if I like it, but I believe it. I believe the end is near. I just don't like the vibe of a thumbnail like that. So I'm always a little bit torn. But I feel you're way more joyful. Happiness has its highs and lows, but joy is a piece that sustains us. Right, joy is more settled. Yeah, it's more of a settled ground that doesn't move. So even if you're having a low day or a high day, there's like this enduring thread. Um, so I would agree with you. They also have to worry about internal transitions too, says Parasito. They can't just have all of their employees drop Destiny and then be on standby for three months while they learn the new tools and the structures for whatever project that they get moved to. They also need time for people to move to the other projects to establish standard times and frameworks. Right. That's exactly right, Parasito. Um... Whenever I feel like I have to cover the drama, I have my wife review the title and the thumbnail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, I, I use the writer's room and I use Creature as that sounding board to be like, hey, do do we think this is, should we say this? Can, can we say this? Is is there grounds for me to claim this, say this, put this on the thumbnail? Right, right, right. I played Destiny for 10,000 hours. Why am I not having fun anymore? I mean, are you... Are you doing like a meme or are you being genuine? You're not the first one to say that the end is near for Bungie. Uh, It's becoming more evident day by day. Speaking of Lord of the Rings a bit ago, uh, says Sven, so many good Gandalf quotes to pull from and lean on for a multitude of life issues. Many that live deserve death and some that die deserve life. Can you give it to them? then do not be so eager to deal out death and judgment. Yeah, that's an excellent section of the book. It's an excellent section. They do a very good job with it in the movie as well. Um, Because he says, it's a pity that Bilbo didn't kill him when he had the chance. And he's like, pity? (laughs) It was pity that stayed Bilbo's hand. (laughs) It's such a good part, dude. (laughs) It's my favorite part. Because he tells him, he tells him that he was meant to find the ring. Ah, oh, and that is a comforting thought. That's excellent. That's like my favorite part. I know this isn't a new thought, but they need a new Destiny three or a new sandbox for that franchise. Um, 
Yeah, I think they face a lot of challenges with doing a sequel. I because I do I do wonder they've done some public defense of the engine, but I do wonder if the engine is you know, are the tires kind of starting to wobble a little bit? Like it's hard. Have you ever been in a car where you go so fast and the car like shakes? I just I just wonder if the engine's always gonna be like that. You know, there's only so much they can do. You can only have so much going on, so much complexity, so much speed. Um, you know, I, that's always been a thought that I have had that if they wanted to do another game, they would need a new engine. But there is such a catch-22 there because part of the reason that destiny feels so good is because of the engine there's like a secret sauce in there i know right now if i booted up the game and i used a couple of hand cannons that were always my favorites like i know it would instantly feel good um so you you don't want to lose that you just don't i think there's always a there's always a, a difficulty when you have the a game feels a certain way and if you lose that we've all played games from you know lesser known developers and you start moving around and shooting and there is something generic about it or uh there is something non-impactful about it this is something that hell divers gets gets incredibly uh right they they nail this aspect player like tangible player impact is what i'll call it you can see it you can feel it you can you can sense it uh tangible player impact and I think that Destiny has always done a very good job with that. When you throw a grenade, when you um, when you do a super, when you you know any of those things, that tangible player impact. What it does is is it gr- it grounds it subversively grounds you in the game. So you quite literally feel like you're in the game. Like you don't, you wouldn't say it like, oh yes, I'm in the game. Mentally, it's creating psychological tethers. So you feel as if you're having this direct impact on on the game and and how things are going. Dragon's Dogma 2 reviews are lower than I thought they would be. They looked really strong when somebody posted a screenshot in the Discord. Uh, loosey goosey. Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. Sometimes, like games feel really like loose, you know. Um. Yeah, I'm seeing I'm seeing eights and nines and tens and like one seven maybe. Mass Effect had the right idea with Andromeda, just poor execution. Time warp to the past as a cataclysm happened or a wormhole to another system, just something for a fresh start. Oh, I've always thought it would be. F- I don't like I don't like doing this cuz it's a little nostalgic, but I've always loved the idea of time traveling and Cade never died. Um or Cade or Cade was somehow saved and it wouldn't disrupt timelines cuz he has no timeline. I always thought it would be so cool to have like a portal in time open. And who was it that we we discovered could time travel? Was it Osiris? He could manipulate time. I thought it would have been amazing to basically what I what the, the story that I had come up with, like almost like a bit of fan fiction, the story that I had come up with was you would open up Destiny 3 with the tower being under attack. And everything's bad and everything is everyone's dying you would see oh was it the stranger that could time travel that's right it was the stranger um but she wasn't the stranger trained by Osiris or something anyways so this the fan fiction story that I had kind of come up with with like a uh, a Destiny 3 
would be that the game would open with everybody dying. Zavala, Shax, um, everybody. Ikora, and you're like the last person standing in the tower, and all of a sudden, everything freezes, and a portal opens, and the stranger steps in, and out from behind the stranger pops out Cade 6, and he's like, don't be mad. (laughs) He's like, don't be mad. And they would take you, he's like, I can explain. And what they would do, he, he would say something like, I have time to explain. Like, they could do, like, a fun call back to that. And, um, you would go through the portal with them, and you would be on a different timeline to essentially undo what leads to the tower's destruction, what leads to basically the death of all guardians, like the basically the end of the light. I always thought that would be an amazing springboard for a third game. You would essentially use time traveling. So what that would do is it'd give you plenty of context to have, and Bungie would love this because they like reusing assets. That's not shade, by the way. I think that's actually a great way of you know, utilizing your capital. I always said that they should be, you know, reusing uh, assets and, and content. Um, and I always thought it'd be really cool that, like, that the premise of the third game would be an alternate timeline where weapons, abilities, and enemies are all different. And so now what you do is you've got a perfectly good reason to reset our power, reset our inventory, um, you know, new enemies, new threats, all this stuff. And so you're in this alternate timeline. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to harness some kind of a power to then jump to the timeline that is yours and undo what has happened to like to some degree. So I always thought that would be pretty cool. I also always thought that this would have been one of the greatest things that they could have done with the cinematics was that when the triangle ships were on the way, we would have gone and harnessed the dreadnought and repowered it. And remember that that weapon that Oryx use and it sends out a shockwave and it kills like an entire fleet, just to, you know, vaporizes them. I always thought that would have been legit. Like create real good story reasons to be like, there's only, you know, somebody be like Eris Moore would be like, there's only one ship known. There's only one source of power known to be strong enough to take out these ships. And Zavala would have been very much against it. It would have been this amazing moment of like, I don't know. There were some really cool things that they could have done, I felt like, with some of that. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what direction they went with any of it. Those are just ideas that I had on how to bring Cade 6 back and you know how to leverage time travel how to reset us for a third game um you know I think there's a lot of fun things they could have done with a lot of that that was peak Destiny 2 sorry Destiny oh yeah 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 Dreadnought Taken King yeah that was peak there was that was very that was really really good content that was really really good stuff I think that they 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 did a they did an excellent job with all of that. Wonder if 30 FPS is playing a role. It's a shame that Capcom didn't find the courage to make a bolder step forward and ditch some annoying outdated elements. Oh, Dragon's Dogma getting a what on Metacritic? An 85. I wouldn't be surprised if that 85 on Metacritic kind of drops a little bit throughout the day. I think Dragon's Dogma is going to be a kind of a... I don't know. I think it's going to be a bit of a polarizing game because of the performance on console. So does Lono know Cade's back? No, I've not paid any attention to the game. I don't know anything that they're doing. The lore implications of that would be wild because that ship and weapon was powered with Oryx's sword logic. Uh huh. And Eris would have helped us figure it out. It would have been so sick. <laughs> it would have been so dangerous and so sick. And it would have brought him back, maybe. Oh, come on, dude. Daddy Oryx. He is, dude. He's, he's Destiny. Nobody will ever convince me otherwise, dude. Destiny's daddy will always be Oryx. Always. Those cinematics. 
his voice, the presence he brought. Good night. He's Destiny's Darth Vader, man. You think it's going to land in the 80s all around? It's only on PS5. It's higher on the other platforms. Eugene says, send that signal loud and clear. F your 30 FPS game. Dragon's Dogma 2 any good? The reviews look strong, but it does look like some people are going to take points off because of performance on console. Like, it's going to feel... I don't know. Season of the Witch? No. I've been playing like a year, but Eris is a hive god now. <laughs> now? <clears throat> um, yeah, Raven, Dan Zatastic is familiar with all that. <clears throat> I just didn't pay any attention. Like, I didn't go watch cinematics to, like, keep myself attached to the game. Hey, we've had some coffee orders that I haven't shouted out. A best of both worlds. <clears throat> what? Three. Three best of both worlds to somebody with the first name that starts with a D. And another three best of both... with the same person? Did you mean to do that? Why are you buying so much coffee? Good night! Um, that's a lot of coffee. Um, okay. I don't know if you're in chat, but that's the most coffee I've ever seen anybody own. Uh, order. Lethal says, yes, give me. That's you? Gee, many Christmas. Guys, indulge me just a second here. You guys may remember we had a, uh, a coffee back in the day. It is the same great coffee, and it's the same great flavor, but it is... Oops, there we go. It is under the name Reforge Roast, so everything's under Reforge Media now. So if you want to order the coffee, support the channel. It supports me, my wife and kiddos. Bag it up and ship it to you. This is not a sponsor. The flavor profiles are available on the site if you want the details of the light roast, if you want the details of the dark roast. And then when you go to shop, you can go to bundles, and you can get the best of both worlds, which is what Lethal Escape just did. Um... It limits to six bags, I discovered. Yes, it does. Yes, it does, because of the because of the shipping. So this is a great way to support what we do here. Um, so and our coffee, if you're a coffee drinker and you've never tried coffee before with balanced acidity, you should definitely try out our coffee. It uh, it features a low or balanced acidity, which makes it very, very light on bitterness, almost no bitterness whatsoever. People drink it black with creamer, they uh, do cold brews, so you should do bigger size orders. We can't do bigger size orders because I would need to get into different shipping boxes and that's just a headache because I don't, I don't, I only have so much space in my house, homie. Um, and we are currently at 2430. We are 70 members away from the goal of 2500. We're two members away from 50. If we hit 50, I gift another five. I like to do that. It helps keep the momentum and uh, you guys can do that. I don't n- know. I, yeah, we probably should. We are also going to be checking out the Helldivers Major Order today. It'll be a pretty short stream. We'll boot up. We'll go into the game. We'll check it. We'll check the progress. We'll discuss it a little bit. Um, Dan's a tastic. Gifts a single member, and it goes to Pooger. Thank you so much for doing that. And uh, welcome on in. Pooger was saying something. He said, yo, in the chat. Good to see you. I think that's a long... Yo, it's good, Captain Toasty Buns. Just add an option for somebody to order an entire pallet at once. Yo, and another one from Danzatastic. There it is. And then Ravenstorm is the agent of chaos and pushes us past 50. Thank you so much for doing that. And that means if you get us to the next one, I'll do another five. Let me gift the five that I owe you guys right now. Thank you for all the generosity to the channel. If you guys get a gifted membership or you're currently paying for your own membership, always remember to get into the Discord. That members only Discord's a great place to meet people to play Helldivers with, connect with old people that are you know old old stomping ground folks that are uh, still playing Destiny. Mm-mm. Ronan over Dogma. I don't know. I've heard that even even Ronan is. Uh, I've heard even it's struggling a little bit with performance. Not as bad. It's not like 30 FPS bad, but it's also you know, being decried is not actually consistently landing on 60. Um, 
So. Yeah, you can't do two gifted. You got to do singles or fives, and you can't do them at the exact same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Outsider with 20 months of membership says, As an ex-Destiny 2 player, I want to know how it ends, but thank God for YouTube to exist. I have no energy to buy a game that uses a lot of reused content. I wish I could create new assets and enemy types. Ronan's running at 60 FPS most of the time in the ray tracing mode. Really? Digital Foundry made it sound like it was not it was not maintaining 60. So maybe I don't know, maybe they were able to patch, optimize or or do something. Can you tell people to do 4E Prime? We got 119,000 and 30,000 on uh Crim, Crim, Crimsica. Yeah, I don't know what people are doing, dude. I miss it here. I've been so busy to sit in the chat. Glad today was the day you had the talk and I was off. Well, I was glad to have you here, Dan Zatastic. Appreciate the support, man. Ghost Boy says, It sucks that Bungie did to you what they did. You can still hear the passion when you're talking about it. I mean, yeah. I Like I said, I think I uh, I can defend the game and remove some of my bias you know I don't know who in Bungie leadership is the ones that orchestrated everything and pulled some of the massive triggers that they pulled um but that doesn't mean that the story in the game isn't great in some respects doesn't mean they don't have a lot of great employees and a lot of great talent you know posted a clip in discord on Monday I mean a clip's not gonna tell the whole story right is Lono our local democracy officer no, no, I'm the I'm the the president and founder of the Helldivers Liberty Union. Um, so we need more people to join the Helldivers Liberty Union to fight against the Ministry of Lies. So it's why I named my ship Guardian of Truth cuz the truth matters a whole lot more. Peak destiny moments were when the entire community was part of a singular goal. Yeah, you know, I I think I think in general, you know, those are moments that you again you can't really manufacture. I don't know. Would anyone in chat recommend J.R.R. Tolkien's books like Rogue Random, Farmer Giles, or Farmer Giles of Ham, Smith Watton Major, and The Adventures of Tom Bombadil? I've not read any of those. Uh, the Children of Huron is quite good. The Children of Huron is quite good. You learn about Turin, Turin Trom, Turan Bar, however you say his name when he changes his name. Um, wow, what a great story. It's very, very good. And then The Fall of Gondolin I have on audio. I haven't listened to that one yet. The term I use worked. Where's your truth now? What are you talking about? What term? S-E-S, Prophet of Truth, reporting in. That's right. So, Seraph Tower Public Event disagree with you? <laughs> Come on. Uh. <laughs> uh. Guess it's worth revealing the truth about Lono again. Come on, man. Patient Zero. Oh, yeah. Yeah, pa- Patient Zero. I'm a part of, I'm a part of Destiny lore. <laughs> There's a video somewhere about that and how that was the first time that like they interwove real life with the lore. That was kind of cool. According to IGN, Dragon's Dogma 2 is very CPU intensive, so that probably explains why the frame rate is so low in towns. Termicide, autocorrect. You said something about termicide? He couldn't manipulate time, just see things for the infinite force. We didn't technically time travel a saint. No, but the uh, the stranger can time travel. They ban you from D1 too. Homie, I didn't even check. <laughs> you know? Yeah, we're D1 streamer now, boys. Like, I didn't even check, bro. You know? They 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 detonated a five year old channel when they did that. There wasn't there wasn't a whole lot we were uh, 
There wasn't much we could do, okay? <laughs> there wasn't really a, uh, a, a, a pivot. So. Pivot to Destiny 1. <laughs> Piv pivot to Destiny 1, you know? Mad respect for taking all the hits and differing opinions on the chin. I mean, I appreciate that. Yeah, Destiny Space Rabies. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. I got like a soft nudge in a DM that was like, hey, at this time, uh, you know, go play PvP. And I was like, okay. And that was all I was, that's all I knew. I was like, all right, we're supposed to, you know, and so I, I was like, let's go to PvP. People were like, what the frick are you doing, man? <laughs> you know, Lono in PvP. What is happening? That was the beginning of the infection, right? I was like, I was like, I'm gonna go play PvP. <laughs> uh, this person was the person at Bungie that pushed Lono's band from the game. No, no. I would say that individual had a hand in my band from Twitch. They practically took credit for it on Twitter, but that was misreported. That was misreported by uh, Upper Echelon. He had nothing to do with my band from Destiny. Yo, Soul Train with a gifted. Thank you so much. Taking us to 52. That's that's such a false report. You know? And it just led to somebody being constantly, you know, attacked about it. And, you know, she had nothing to do with it either. And, you know, Bungie... Whoever at Bungie did it is just too cowardly to fess up. They would rather somebody that had nothing to do with it get publicly blamed and attacked over it. Kind of gross, but par for the course <laughs> par for the course for Bungie leadership honestly Do you remember the days when you were wasting countless hours chasing the booty warden's law hey hey you watch your freaking mouth dude the warden's law they, don't you remember don't you remember didn't they do like a patch or something and then that gun was like the truth for a while man that gun was awesome they did something to that archetype didn't they I swear, I swear they did something out of Archetype. And I was like, I told y'all. I told y'all this Archetype was it. <laughs> what was it? The 110? The 110 Archetype? That freaking Warden's Law was awesome. I loved it. It looked good. Sounded good. Felt good. You know? It was good. Yo, good morning, Feed. No, it was still bad. Can't confirm that gun still bangs. Yeah. They came out with a new version of it. Did they really? <laughs> oh. I remember chasing that gun with you. Yeah, dude. I'm telling you. That was... That was always my favorite. Was like finding something like that and just going for it. I'm like, no, nah, we're going to get this. We're going to get this. And my favorite was the people in chat. Were like, why the frick do you want this weapon? That was always my favorite. Because people are always like, what are you doing? They reworked it into a burst. It's decent now. A burst? It was 110 that shot two bullets at the same time. Only hand cannon of its type. That's what I'm saying. It was a cool gun, man. See, some of y'all optimize the fun out of a game. And I was always the guy that was like, eh, I like this weapon. It just feels good. I used that Suros... <sighs> Suros DS-47 Scout Rifle. Was that it? And it was not a good weapon, and I loved it anyway. Thung, 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 thung. That's what it sounded like. <laughs> oh, it was great. And people were like, why are you using this? Why are you using this weapon? I was like, because I like it. <laughs> and then I made the fatal mistake of using a freaking hand cannon. Suros DS-47. It's a weapon, isn't it? Oh, the DIS-47. Yeah, dude! This is it! <laughs> this freaking weapon, man! This weapon. I remember consistently using this weapon in Destiny 1 King's Fall. Like, and people are like, Why? 
They're like, why are you using this weapon? Every day, I'd be running that stupid King's Fall raid all friggin' day. And people are like, why are you using that weapon? <laughs> The hardcore D Destiny guys, they they never liked me. They were like, what in the frick is this guy doing? How does he have this many viewers with such a terrible gun? <laughs> Duke El Orphan. Thank you so much for jumping back in as a member, dude. You the best. The gun was good. I use it a ton. And then everybody wanted to use the... Um, what was the Dead Orbit Scout rifle that they brought back recently, people told me? What was the dead orbit? It was white. It was so big. It looked like you were holding a refrigerator. It took up so much room on the screen. I was one of those that made my head hurt watching you use that. <laughs> I knew how many headshots it take to take out certain enemies. You know, I knew he's like, thung, 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 thung. I had it down. And then guys with hand cannons are like, kapow, kapow, kapow. Like, obviously. Yeah, hung jury. The hung jury ate up so much screen capital dude like a ridiculous amount of screen capital like if you divided your screen into four quadrants like four player split screen fourth the fourth quadrant was the hung jury it was just that gun it was so big oh my gosh <laughs> under any circumstances would you play destiny again i mean if i got unbanned probably you know if you know obviously i would appreciate <laughs> something that they'll never do <laughs> public apology highly doubt we'll ever get that <laughs> you know yeah yeah i didn't use touch of malice too and that irritated people Oh, they freaking hated the fact that I used Touch of Malice. Oh, they hated it. I had that video, Destiny's New Galahorn. It was one of my most watched videos. People hated that video. I was like, Touch of Malice is the new Galahorn. Like, everybody is saying that you you have to use it, you know? <laughs> Why isn't he using Tom? Why isn't he using Tom? <laughs> Use Tom. Use Tom, you noob. Oh, I never got the weapon. Never shot a single bullet with the weapon. Just to just to irk people. I put Helldiver summary since yesterday's stream in Discord. Okay. I still blame you getting shards of Galanor nerfs. You fun ruiner. I mean, you know, what is not my fault, dude. I don't know. I just went into the blind well and was like shards of Galanor, you know, got it back, got it back. Oh my gosh. Shards of Galanor in the blind well and on that stupid, what was that? Just God awful content on that bridge. And oh my gosh. One of the worst pieces of content they've ever made. And shards of Galanor made it tolerable. No, 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 no. It wasn't shards of Galanor. It was the... Uh, it's not the apotheosis veil. It's the other. There was a. There was a. Um. Uh. Uh. uh um. Ah, oh, I hate this. There was a warlock helmet. The Nova bomb helmet that was so broken. It was broken in Gambit. It was broken on that bridge, and they nerfed it. Yeah, reckoning. Oh my gosh, garbage content. Some of the worst Destiny content ever created. That's freaking bridge. I remember using that Nova Bomb helmet in Gambit and I said after one match I said Skull of the Dire Ahamkara was that it the Ahamkara oh my gosh I was like they're, they're gonna nerf this they're gonna nerf this tomorrow it was so broken in Gambit you could literally they would spawn those majors like witches and stuff that were really hard to kill and you'd be like boom and you'd get almost all, sometimes you'd get all of your Nova back. And I'm like, this is game breaking. This is literally breaking the content. <laughs> and on Reckoning, you'd be like, Zhit, boom. And like eight ogres would die. And you'd just be like, Zhit, got it back. Slova bomb with skull. Oh, it was, it was, it was godlike. 
It was godlike. Yeah, it was the skull of the dire Ahamkara. Skull of the dire Ahamkara Nova, and then the freaking shards of Galanor. That's some of the best, just... That's peak chaotic destiny. Right? <laughs> that's just peak chaotic destiny. If, that, if they can harness that in the good of the guns, man... There's something. There's just. There was always something there. Shards. Phoenix Protocol. Oh yeah, Phoenix Protocol. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Phoenix Protocol. I mean, it got to the point where. Um. Do you remember when I said that they needed to nerf the the what what was it called the well of of light or whatever. Kills and assist while standing in your well of radiance return super energy. <laughs> it was so it was so stupid. It was so stupid. The well of radiance. It was basically like every piece of content. It was like well of radiance. I, is it a boss? Yeah. Is it big? Yes. Is it strong? Yes. Well of radiance. You know. <laughs> I kept saying, I was like, Well of Radiance is literally, it just needs to be nerfed. Like, it's so good. It's all, it's in every single friggin' fight. You know? Orpheus rigs. Yeah, the Orpheus rigs. Instant tether back. Mm, 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 mm. That was so good on that one fight where you had to re, oh my gosh, what was that fight? You had to rebuild the floor. Well, still getting nerfed to this day. It's good to know I'm still having an effect on that game. I called for a nerf. I called for a nerf of Well of Radiance like four years ago. I was like, this is so stupid. It's too strong. What was the raid where you had to rebuild the floor and there was electricity on the ground and you had to go through the oh you had to go through the portals and kill so many enemies on the sides. Oh, what was that dadgum raid? It was a big giant guy out in the water. Garden of Salvation, yes. In the Garden of Salvation, I remember, oh my gosh, I remember how good we would get with the tethers. You knew exactly where to put them. Mm. Mm. They had some good they had some good stuff, dude. They had some good content, man. They had some good raids. Yeah, man. Like looking through an old photo album. Yes, you had to be connected with the beams. <laughs> you had to be connected with the beams. Oh my gosh. That was such I actually thought I actually thought that was a really good raid. I really did. I thought that was a really good raid. The one um the one section where you had to like run forward and there were all those guys sniping those guys, the big what are the eye thing? What were those eye things called? They would spawn on the pillars in the boss room. I remember you missing that jump. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Which one? Just remember getting those builds was a grind fest of a bunch of stuff that you didn't really want to do. Old Orpheus Tether with Slova and a well with three missile titans was one of my favorite memes. Infinite Flyboys. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's why I'm telling you, like, I think the IP is worth protecting. I think the game, I think the devs, the, the, the employees, I think they're worth protecting. There's, there's magic there that I think could potentially be reharnessed. I just think you need new leadership, maybe new game, maybe new engine. I don't know. I don't know if that's even conceivable or even possible, but, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there, I, there is good. There's good stuff there. There really is. I think there's a lot of, a lot of uh, potential. Still, that was always the buzzword. You know, that was always the buzzword with Destiny. Oh, so much potential. So much potential. Um, I believe it's still there. You know, I, be- I believe a lot of that potential is still there. Sony said the Destiny is their main focus. I, I think I think Sony knows the value of the IP, the tech. Um, I think Sony knows the value of the staff, you know. 
the data. A lot of data. A lot of data there that can help, you know, with with other games, other future endeavors. Um, you know, I, I don't think they want to let the Destiny IP sink off or ride off into the sunset. I think they, I think they want it. Helldiver's current status. Bugs have been slowed down again. Originally at 5% an hour. Bug fortitude down to 3% yesterday. Down to 1.5% today. Istanu has liberated, was liberated sometime shortly after midnight last night. Four Prime should be wrapped up tonight if we get the same rates again. Currently at 14.7% liberation with 120,000 people participating. Once Four Prime is done, two more planets also have to be captured before we gain Zagon Prime. If we're only doing one planet a day, we're going to be short by about two planets when the major order expires. With the bugs being slowed down even more, I think we still might fail. Okay, I'm going to probably read this uh, during the open of this next stream. Corey is up 15%. Can you edit your original text? I'll just, I can do it. I can remember when I get to 14.7. Fifteen dot four. Okay, I can edit it in this document that I'm going to use. Fifteen dot four. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Yo, if we could get five hundred likes on this video, that would be phenomenal. Such a big turnout today. A lot of new subs. A lot of new members. Inching ever closer to the twenty five hundred member goal. Um. So, you want the patch notes too? Yeah, we could probably look at the patch notes as well. <clears throat> the fact that Luke was put in charge of the Destiny IP outside the game and they haven't developed anything in the past four years is staggering. No comics, TVs, toys, nothing. Well, and the real danger now is the money, the money that it would take to create and produce that stuff when the game is clearly going down in demand and going down in popularity. I, I can't see it being worth it. Why would you ship any of that stuff at this point? You know? Ronan holds mostly 60 with RTX on. That's great to me since the Pro is coming and any game with 60 mode already will be... Uh, perfected with stable frames and better resolution. Can you turn ray tracing off or is that not even an option? Like, is that not even an option or is ray tracing just on in, in Ronin? Please give me the option to view it that way. Oh yeah, open critic separating by platform. Yeah, because Dragon's Dogma reviews are going to be a lot better for PC, you know, because they're not dealing with 30 frames per second, you know? Yo, what's good, John Hall? How are you? Uh, Let me make sure this is still working. Okay, it is. Okay, and then I can get the patch notes up here. Okay. 
a movie or a TV show might be a great way to bring more attention to Destiny. Again, I, I think the, I think again the worry would be loss. Like how much, how much are you going to lose? You know. Um. Because of the, how are you going to recoup that? If they're if demand for the game is kind of going down, like is that really the route? Um, I don't know. Is that the route to? them sort of getting what they need which is they they need to start to make more money they need the IP to be in a better place the the silk knight leaker on twitter says only time will tell but up there there's a mark cerny who sees everything and there are some eager dogs waiting for their chances to be unleashed that's when the ps5 pro will make sense is it hinting at naughty dog it could be hinting at Naughty Dog, yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Hang on, what's Paris saying? Either way, the planets remain after four he completed to complete the order. There's currently one day, 20 hours, and 40 minutes left on the order. Yeah, I don't think... I don't know if we're going to be able to complete the order. I think they're either going to have the Illuminate come and help us as part of the evolving story... Um, you know, that, that, that might happen or I don't know, or we fail and that's part of the story. I don't know. Uh, let's see here. We'll go here. We'll click that. And then we'll have to make sure and, hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-mm. All right. Apparently, people are encountering more flying bugs as well. So. Okay. Guys, do me a favor. And we're yeah, we're super close to the 500 likes. Get us to 500 likes. Give me like two seconds. I'll be right back. We got more things to do, more content to make. And uh, you're not going to want to miss this. All right? We got some good stuff coming. So don't... Don't... Uh, don't bail. I know a lot of you were here just for the Destiny and the Bungie, hoping for drama or whatever. And again, we've always said this every time we cover the Bungie stuff or the Destiny stuff. We'd love for you to come back around and get involved. Uh, my DMs on Twitter are open. Um, you know, I don't know who was in the who was in the audience today, but um, you know, always open to you know some form of reconciliation. Would love for people to do the right thing. I'm not holding my breath for that, but, you know, that door is always open. So I'm going to take a quick, quick break. I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. And then we are going to uh, to jump to something else, which I think is going to be awesome. I think this Helldiver stuff's getting pretty cool. So don't go anywhere. I'll be right back.
Oh, did somebody get a screenshot? Who is that guy? Oh, there will be some gods waiting for their chains to be unleashed. Wrong account or Photoshop. Hmm. Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. Great day, great turnout, great membership bump. Let's shift gears here. Uh, okay. We're going to be checking out the major order, playing a little hell divers. And uh Hang on. Oh, that's the snitch. Oh. So is the snitch borrowing homework or did Silk Knight borrow homework? Which is it? Okay. Or a fake snitch. Yeah, maybe. I need to be over here. All right. I'm going to give you guys, uh, could be a fake one. Okay. I'm going to give you guys some links. I'm, uh, announcing it in the discord. We gonna, we gonna move. There's a link in chat guys. Make sure when we go over to this new stream that you go crazy on the like button. Uh, that usually is a huge, huge help to the new stream. We are diving in to Helldivers 2, the new major order. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an update on the progress, uh, where we stand right now. I had a community mem- member, Parasitos, kind of crunch the numbers on the bugs being sort of slowed down and our progress and the likelihood of us actually failing the current major order. I also have patch notes for you that I'll be reading through. So if you like the Helldivers 2 coverage, make sure you hit subscribe and the bell button. Here on Reforged Gaming, I play and cover the game regularly. Also be sure to check out Helldivers 2 Updates. That's the name of the channel. We have a channel where we regularly post those updates and short videos that we don't post here. I'm going to end the previous stream and redirect people over from the Bungie stream. Bungie, the end is near. Thank you for all the support and positivity during that stream. Uh, Always kind of tough to cover that game 